Stay tuned for the planet Earth's most relevant newscast. Broadcasting from Sector 17G of the Milky Way Galaxy, we present you a program that is a strange combination of newsworthy and non-newsworthy. Funny at times and extremely non-funny at others. Ladies and gentlemen, Earthlings and Lunars, we present to you, Velma Live. Welcome to episode 53 of Veilmount Live. I'm Anne-Marie Scott. And I'm Jody Newham. Welcome to the program. We have an incredible show for you tonight, Veilmount. It is replete with useful information. Packed to the gills with great journalism. So overwhelming, so dense. You will wonder where your time has gone and how you can get it back. Unfortunately, it's not very funny. It's not funny at all. So let's begin at the beginning. Some of you may have noticed we had some technical difficulties earlier this week. In fact, VCTV's regular programming was off the air for much of Tuesday and Wednesday. Turns out a Chinese refugee with a mask had snuck inside our computer. He was pretending to be an older white guy. I mean, why would anyone want to pose as a white dude? Where's the benefit? As if there's some advantage to being an old white guy. It's like sexist and racist at the same time. Well, he's currently being detained by Immigration Canada. It's a good reminder not to take off my mask when I go to the washroom. Jody, I've told you this before. Never take off your mask. Hold on to your hats, Veilmount, because later in the program, Veilmount Live's executive producer, Andrew McCracken, is going to present his Christmas revitalization plan. We also have these stories. Exchange students. What does the X stand for? And what do they change? The food bank. Well, what is it? And do they offer currency exchange? Also, we're talking about the resurgence of curling in Veilmount. They're calling it a sport now. And what is our little jailhouse crafter making this week? Incarcerated craft correspondent Zachary Schneider is breaking rock. Oh, I love mosaics. No, Zach is actually breaking rock. Oh dear. Turns out, last week, Zachary didn't actually have scissor privileges, so now he's turning big rocks into small rocks. It's a learning experience. Next week on Jailcrafts, Zach will make a lava lamp. Why? Well, the warden, uh, it's a long story. Let's begin. Let's start with the food bank. According to Dorothy and Len Jones, the food bank is looking for donations to make up 37 Christmas hampers this year. Reporter Andrew McCracken spent some time with Dorothy and Len. It's better than it was last year before we got all the help from town and out of town. But it is, uh, it is pretty good. By the time we do our baskets, our shelves will be empty. Uh, October, November, December, January and February are our heaviest months. And then in the summer it kind of eases off because people get odd jobs and do whatever. Mm. But yeah, that's our, and we're getting, um, I think it was 28 baskets we gave out this month already. And then we've got to give the hampers. And how does that compare with other years? Uh, it's up quite a bit from other years. Uh, we got 37 baskets to do out for the Christmas hampers. How, <laughs> how do you feel things are going in them? And what's the future look like? I don't know what the future is. It's pretty, pretty disgusting looking right now. It's really hard to say. The job outlook is not that great. <laughs> is, it, is it rewarding? Oh, to see the, <laughs> see the people. Look at their faces when they come in, when they leave. It's time, especially at Christmas time, we eat all the presents, eh? Mm hmm We got a Christmas tree at the... Angel angel tree at the library. So, people... Yeah. I have named uh, age tags on it, and uh, people they? take an age, and they buy a gift, and they bring it back to the library. Right, boy or girl so, on it. And yeah. that ends up coming to the food bank. That's yeah. what it's yeah. saying. Yeah. We got to run and pick them up and wrap them. You guys must go through just a tremendous amount of food. Oh, we do. A really amount. Because with what you've seen on our lists out there, 
you see what goes in boxes every month. Sure? And then our Christmas boxes are always, always bigger because we put fresh food in them. So it's all fresh stuff, vegetables, it's a complete meal. It's, it's not, not, not canned stuff. The only oh, canned yeah. stuff they get is soup at Christmas time. Soup and uh, cranberry sauce. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Oh. When when you sign up to work for the food bank, you have a um, thing that you don't tell anybody who's getting from the food bank or or not. Yeah. What should people get? What what's what are good items to get? The macaroni pa or like pasta, um, rice. Peanut butter and jam. Peanut butter and jam. We're all done like that. Yeah, we're right out of it now. Carnation mm. milk. Any lucky enough to The canned milk that uh, you know is good too because families that have younger kids they use the canned milk. Right. Yeah. For people who who uh, might be watching and 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 want to use your services. How do they get in touch or what do they need to know? All they have to do is phone me and uh, that's a 4858. <laughs> Think of my number. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Thanks Dorothy and Len. Food donations can be made at the CIBC Bank. Financial contributions and turkey bucks can be dropped off at the grocery store. And if you'd like to help out, call Dorothy or Len at 566-4858. They need people with strong backs. We've all heard about foreigners coming to Vailmount. Now they're in our schools. This week, we're profiling two of the exchange students currently studying at the Vailmount Secondary School. First up is Ben from New Zealand. Ben McLeod, I'm from New Zealand. I'm trying not to talk as much like a New Zealander. Can you identify what's the difference between a Canadian accent and a New Zealander? Oh, when I say, or oh, when people say my name in New Zealand, we say Ben. Yeah, it's Ben. It's yeah, an accent, accent. It's kind of hard to identify all of them, but you can definitely hear the difference. So, uh, do you get teased at all about uh, about your accent? Oh yeah, <laughs> a lot. Um, yeah, all the boys have started calling me Australian and stuff, which, I mean, calling a New Zealander Australian is like calling a Canadian American. <laughs> wow. Well, that's pretty intense. Yeah. Is there anything about Australians that you would be offended by that? Like, it's pretty much the same as New Zealand, I mean, as Canadian and Americans. It's just a rivalry, really. It's always in sports. New Zealanders and Australians don't get along at all. <laughs> You're in grade 10 here? Yeah. Have you finished grade 10 in New Zealand? or? Uh, yeah. How is the course material different? Um, well, I don't really know like in the academic side of things because I'm only taking easy classes like P, mechanics, art and food. <laughs> Those are my courses. But how's, it, I, how's it going? I love them all. They're all great fun. I'm learning heaps in them. Why did you decide to come to Canada? Um, originally it was for the hockey because I play inline hockey back in New Zealand and I've always liked ice hockey. I just decided I really liked it here, the nature and stuff. Sweet. The wildlife. And how about the hockey? I love it. How, how's your team? Um, we're pretty good. Yeah, we, our first tournament we lost one game. Tournament on the weekend wasn't as great because we were five players down because some of the girls volleyball players were away and some people have left so we didn't do too great but I'm loving it. We got a home tournament this weekend. Did you know how small the place would be? I only figured out a few weeks before I came about this that my family was here. It's got all your needs here. It's, I like it here. No big city rush. And where are you from in New Zealand? Are you from uh, the city? You'd probably consider, consider it a big city here. In New Zealand it's not really that big. Um, 70,000, but I live a little bit out just by the beach. Um, how is life different? In New Zealand I don't really, not as much work to be done outside where I live because it's just different. Like in here there's all the feeding horses looking after them. What is the worst part 
of Valmont. Uh, Tim Hortons. Needed Tim Hortons, that's what it is. <laughs> you, you, this is a serious thing? That's serious. This is serious. It, it occurs to me just now, right now in the course of this interview, that you may in fact be fleeing the law. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's not me. What's your advice to somebody coming on an exchange? Well, from my perspective, um, lots of people think about that they're going to get really homesick. The second I got on the plane leaving Nelson, I didn't feel homesick at all. So it's really scary before, and it's like a sports match, how you're nervous before it, and then the second it starts, you're all fine. What is the funniest insult that you've received here? Um, well, everyone, including my teachers, have been calling me Ben. Because that's how everyone's saying it. That's how I say it in New Zealand. And that's, I get it at least 10 times every day. But it, that is your name. Yeah, it's ben. normal for me. Ben. See, People. here we spell Ben B E N. Yeah. What's your last name, by the way? It's got to be hard to travel with a name like Bean. But Bean isn't the only foreigner in our midst. Here's an interview with Marcus of Sweden. Wait, tell me, where are you from? I'm from Gothenburg, Sweden. I'm Marcus, uh, 18 years old, grade 12, uh, exchange student from uh, Sweden. I haven't been living in a big town for a long while. Between five and 600,000 people. What brought you to Vailmount of all places? I had no idea I would come to Vailmount until I actually got my host family. Uh, I think it suits me perfect because I like smaller places. It fits me perfect. What, what are some of the things you've noticed about Vermont that have been that have been different or different than your expectations? Hospitality. Uh, people are a lot more nice than I thought they would be. I guess in my mind I always thought that people would be, you know, rude. But everybody's being so nice and um, I didn't think there would be a lot to do, like during weekends and stuff, but we always have something to do. I either go to the rink, play hockey, we can go out skiing, being with friends. What's the downside of Vermont? It's cold. That's what I would say. It's colder than home. Uh, By how much? Right now, I would say it's the same degrees, but when we had about 15 to 20 below, that's a lot colder than home. We usually have, during winter time, it's usually minus 7, minus 6. Now, tell me about the teasing. How do kids tease you? <laughs> oh, it's a lot different. We have, uh, well, we actually have one fun incident. Uh, a friend in school. Her uh, her dad thinks I'm her dad. I've seen me once with a hockey helmet on, so uh, he thought I was cross-eyed, and uh, now everybody's making fun of me about that because he always thinks I'm cross-eyed. And then people, uh, you know, intend to you know if I do something or when we're on the hockey bench, oh, I'm always referred to as either the dumb Swede or the you know foreign exchange student or something like that. Okay. So, is that hurtful? No. Not in any way. <laughs> Actually not. It's uh, You know that they're not really serious about it, so uh, it's okay. It's all right. And uh, do you ever poke back at the Canadians? Do you ever... Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Tell me, what's the, what's the best one you've come up with? I asked uh, Bradley Towers uh, if it was uh, 2002 or 2003 that Canada started dealing with money instead of trade. That was the best one. I usually uh, respond back on the person itself trying to make fun of the person. Right. Or just take it as it comes and laugh with them. I've never played hockey before I came here. I played pond hockey before I came here. Yeah. With friends uh, on uh, open lake ices and stuff. In rinks, we usually just skated uh, pond hockey with school sometime. I played hockey in a team for uh, about two months now. Wow, wow. And what is it like? It's great. Yeah. Everybody's great. Uh, it's a good team. Uh, a variety of uh, people and team like but I think we make out a good team and uh, what I like about it is that everybody's so nice and uh, want you to do your best they tell me if I do something wrong they could tell me how to do it differently yeah. in that case I will learn faster and also I will learn better what position do you play uh, I play left forward Belmont hockey hero uh, would probably have to be Bradley Towers a lot of the things I actually do better now than when I came here. He 
taught me how to do. He's the one taking me to the rink uh, weekends, and uh, he's a good friend too, so uh, he's a great friend. So. <laughs> Seems like these kids are really enjoying themselves. Let's keep tabs on them and see if they get homesick. Our neighbors to the south may not agree, but some people call curling a sport. If it wasn't before, it is now, because we're showing you some curling highlights with electric guitar in the background. Last year, the Valemount Curling Club suffered very low turnout and basically didn't run a program. This year, the interest is phenomenal. We spoke to Teresa Colosimo about the surge in interest while she was showing some ESL students how to play. We have uh, six teams on Monday night, and we have seven teams on Tuesday night, so it's awesome. Right on. Awesome, yeah. yeah. It's so nice to have everybody out here again. And we have junior curling on Friday afternoons, and we have about, about eight to uh, 15 kids. How does it compare to last year? There was nothing last year. Right. Yeah. This year is amazing. It's good to see everybody out. Great. Yeah. Excellent curling, I guess. Stand by, Valemount, because we've got an editorial coming up from Economist correspondent, Andrew McCracken, that could change Christmas forever. Good evening, Valmont. You know, Valmont, the world economy is in tough shape today. Many countries are on the verge of financial meltdowns with untold consequences. Unemployment is skyrocketing. Even the Irish are suffering, and the Irish are always lucky. This calls for extreme action. The economy doesn't just need stimulation, it needs defibrillation, which is kind of difficult because it can be hard to find the economy's heart. But I've got the answer. We've got to sell something to get our economy going again. I believe it's time to sell Christmas. Christmas is one of the biggest brands going, and it's popular in the richest countries. And it's a brand that we can sell. We just all have to agree to stop calling it Christmas and start calling it something else. Now, I know what you're saying. Selling out a religious holiday to bail us out of our current mire, isn't that a, isn't it a bit shallow? Uh, possibly sacrilegious? Besides, how do we sell out Christmas any more than we already have? I mean, with the vinyl Santa caps, plastic trees, the gaudy ornaments, and pagan figures co-opted from a cola sales campaign, can we do worse? Can we do worse than a big fat man in a red suit and a white beard bribing children to behave well before the celebration of the birth of the King of Kings? Sell out Christmas? This is not a new idea, people. Now, don't get me started on the orgy of shopping and consumerism that leads up to that celebration. It's unvarnished materialism, without concern for the environment or future generations, let alone the factory workers living next to the toxic tailings pond left in the wake of the newest disposable cell phones. Our only concern is the snotty-nosed generation in front of the tree, impatiently waiting to be disappointed by your mid-to-poor gift-buying skills so that they can go back to playing their video games. How, you ask, could we further sell out this second of all holiest holidays? Well, I've got the answer. I assume you're all familiar with GM Place in Vancouver, Rexall Place in Edmonton, also the TELUS Center and uh, the Shaw Conference Center. Uh, corporate sponsorship 
it's got a lot to offer everyone. Colonel Sanders knows it. The children being born at the Northlands Dodge Pediatric Wing in Prince George, they know it. It is what it is. It is money and lots of money. We need to sell the name Christmas to a concerned corporate citizen. Hopefully a company with some connection to the holiday. Coca-Cola might fit in. Heck, they practically invented Santa Claus and Monsanto. Oh, they've got a great connection with seeds. I mean, what would a patent on the seed of Christianity be worth? Really though, the only organization with enough pull, enough money to, to bring something like this off, they'd have to be a superpower, literally. Brand America could work, but it could get awfully tacky. I mean, what would they have? Would they have an intelligent design day? I think the most obvious choice is the best one. They already have a stranglehold on Christmas supplies. The toys, the plastic trees, the iPods, heck, they even make our oranges. I'm talking about China. It's unprecedented branded potential for that country. And who's kidding? I mean, the China brand has been suffering. And really, what's cheaper, addressing human rights abuses and environmental calamities or a good old-fashioned branding campaign? Now, I know there is a whole movement to keep Christ in Christmas, yes, and it's sponsored by various religious organizations. But unfortunately, those groups, they don't have enough money, not unless they all get together, and that ain't going to happen anytime soon. But I'm not looking for controversy here, folks. I'm, I'm looking for solutions. The way I see it, the economy demands that we sell Christmas. And as far as I can see, the economy is the only higher power that everybody believes in. So this year, I won't be celebrating Christmas. I'm waiting for something more profitable. Thank you all. I'm Andrew McCracken. And Merry Chinamas. That's all we have for you tonight, folks. Remember to get your tickets for the Valemount Arts and Cultural Raffle. Raffle, Raffle of, of the century. century! Win a trip from Via Rail, Cold Fire Creek Dog Sledding, Alpine Country Rentals, or Ski Passes from Marmot Basin. Get your tickets at the Crafters Guild or from a VAX board member. The draw will be held on live television on January 13th right here on Valemount Live. Oh, excuse me. Oh, oh, this just in. It's the Tijon Christmas Dinner, Sunday, December 12th. And they're having a membership drive. Memberships are $10. And the Bale Mount Churches are putting on a Christmas concert, Saturday, December 11th at 6 p.m. For advanced tickets, call Pat at 566-4438. And it's the Legion Christmas Party. Five o'clock drinks, six o'clock dinner, and seven o'clock gift exchange on December 13th. 13th? 12th. 12th? Saturday. Saturday. Sunday. 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 <laughs> December 12th. <laughs> we have a Monday. <laughs> and congratulations to our local musical minstrel Ragu, Lokanathan, and Sophia on their new baby girl. Congratulations. Have a wonderful night. Thanks for watching. Good night. Good night.